Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Uh, welcome to this challenge video where I'm going to attempt to complete as many 7Q Code Wars Code Katas as possible within an 11 minute time limit. This is our break timer, we're just getting started. If you're sitting at home, you've been watching YouTube all day, just take a stretch, take your hands off the keyboard, prepare to uh, write some code. Um, so if you're new to the Code Wars website, uh, the difficulty ranges from 8Q, which is very easy, all the way up to 1Q, which is very hard. We're gonna be in the 7Q range, which is fairly easy, but a little bit harder than totally easy. <laughs> Let's get started. Uh, I'm gonna start with this one, which is alternate capitalization. Oh, and we'll start the timer now. <laughs> So this says, given a string, capitalize the letters that occupy even indexes and odd indexes separately. The return as shown below. So index zero will be considered even. So if it's an even index, it should be capitalized. If it's an odd index, it should be lowercase. So um, typically, if you tune into the Code Katas series on my channel, uh, I solve them in multiple ways and I try to solve them in a beginner friendly style. However, I've already wasted 30 seconds, so we're gonna power through it. So I'm gonna do uh, s.split, so I'm gonna turn this uh, string into an array, and then I'm gonna map over each individual character, so let's call that c for character, uh, and then we also have the index. Um, and I can just check, so I can say, if uh, the index mod two, so if the remainder of the division by two is equal to zero, then that means it's even. And in that case, we wanna do c.2 uppercase. Uh, otherwise, we do c.2 lowercase. And then we send that whole thing, we're gonna join, because it's an array, we're gonna join it back together, um, back to a string. And that should do it. I'm gonna write it like this, so it's a little bit easier to read. Um, let's see, test. Failed. Expected. Oh! I see. We need to do it both ways. We need to do it both ways. We need to do it the first way and the second way. So, I mean, technically what I could do is... Yeah, it's a nice error. So, <laughs> great start. <laughs> technically, I need an array where the first one is um, that, and then the, the second one is the same thing but with the opposite logic. So, if, if the remainder is not equal to zero, then we, we flop it around. Yeah, look at that. Now, that took us two minutes. I could refactor this. In the real world, I would. I would put this in a separate function, but that's all I'm gonna do for now, because we gotta keep moving. So that did it. Great work, everyone. One down, one down. <laughs> all right, final submission, let's go. Go, please go. All right, moving on. Um, next one is remove duplicate words. So this one says, your task is to remove all duplicate words from a string, leave only single first word word entries. So for example, Alpha, beta, 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 gamma, delta, whatever. And then we end up with alpha, beta, gamma, delta. All right, let's go. <laughs> Flip it, flop it, bop it, bip it. So uh, what we, what I want to do is I want to keep track of words that we have seen. Seen. Um, and I'm going to put that into a set. A set is a nice data structure. Uh, it only has unique items inside of it. And we can check to see if a unique, unique item is already in there. Uh, we're going to split this, um, split this, <laughs> Uh, sentence into words uh, by splitting it on a space. So when I split on a space, that turns the sentence into an array of words. Um, and then we're going to look at each individual word. Um, and actually, I'm just going to run a filter. So I'm going to filter over the words. And if we have not seen a word before, then it will uh, show up in the resulting sentence. But if we have seen it before, it will not show up. So this is going to give us each individual word. And I will do like so. I'll say if seen dot has the word, then we return false. Otherwise, we'll say seen dot add, I think. I'll have to look up wh how it works with a set. So add the word and return true. Um, and then we need to just join this whole thing back together on a space. Um, yeah, I think that would work too, Andrew. I like that solution. But let's look it up a set on MDN. Is it add? Does anybody know? Is it set? Set dot set? What's the method? Set dot add. I did it right. Great work, everyone. <laughs> and if I've done it right, yes. First try. Submit. Submit. This, I, I, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> All right, next one is called greet me. 
Um, and this one says, uh, write a method that takes one argument as a name and then greets that name, capitalized and ends with an exclamation point. So for example, um, we get in a name and we have to say hello name with exclamation. However, you'll notice that we have to uh, lowercase it and uppercase the first word. So that's that's the tricky part of this problem. Let's try it. So um, let's just say uh, proper name <laughs> is going to be uh, name dot two lowercase. Actually, we'll do this. So I want to take the first letter. So name at bracket zero. That's going to give me the first letter in the name, and I want to two uppercase it. So capitalize the first letter in the name, and then on the end of it, I'm going to take the all of the, the rest of the name except for the first character. So I, sh I could do name dot slice one. So that will um, remove the first character from the string, return a new string, and then I want to two lowercase it like that. So that should be the proper name. And then I just want to return, in this case, I'm going to use a template function so I can say hello, proper name. Did I spell proper name right? Proper name? Like that. <laughs> test. Uh, so that worked for the basic test case. Does it work for everything? It does. So final submission. Um, all right, we have five minutes left. We're doing pretty good. It's not so bad. All right, this one says it's called predict your age. Um, all right, my grandfather always predicted how old people would get, and right before he passed away, he revealed his secret. Uh, in honor of my grandfather's memory, we will write a function using his formula. So take a list of ages when each of your great-grandparents died. Multiply each number by itself. Add them all together. Take the square root of the result, divide by two. <laughs> That sounds like fun. And for those of you new to programming, this is kind of like, this is our algorithm. These are the steps that we need to take and implement. And basically I need to take these human words and turn them into code. So I think I can do that. So we have the list of ages. Um, and right now they're just a bunch of arguments. There are eight different ones. So I'm actually just gonna put them into an array. I'm gonna say um, uh, ages equals uh, an array with all those ages inside of it. So take the list of ages and then multiply each number by itself. So um, what I will do is I will, I'll do first do a map. So I'll say ages.map, and we need to take each age and return that age times itself. Okay, so age times age. Now this gives us a new array where all of the ages have been multiplied by themselves. Uh, then we need to add them all together. So to add them together, I'll use a reduce. Um, and a reduce lets you take all the things in an array and, and put it into a single item. So I'm going to reduce the array into the sum. And so that's going to give us each individual age. We want to return sum plus age like that. So now we have the sum of all the ages. Take the square root of that result. So I'm going to do math.square root of this whole thing. And then divide that by 2. Now, if I've done it correctly, no! <laughs> so expected 86, instead got 86.84037. So I think what we need to do is we need to take this whole result and then uh, math.round it. Um, should round it down. Is that going to work? Math.round. Test. That's 87. We want to do math.floor <laughs> because math.floor just drops the decimal. Yeah, Andrew has it. There we go. Nice. All right, we've got three minutes left. I think we're doing pretty good. Does it, has anybody keep, kept track? How many katas have we done? All right, next up is testing one, two, three. Um, this one says, your team is writing a fancy new text editor, and you've been tasked with implementing the line numbering. Uh, write a function. Yeah, we've done four. Thank you. <laughs> write a function that takes a list of strings and returns each line prepended by the correct number. The number starts at one. The formatting is in string. Easy. So we have an array of strings. Each string needs to have the number in front of that string. We can do this. I believe in us. So we're going to say uh, array.map. So this is another scenario where I would use map because we're taking an array of one thing and turning it into an array of another thing. So we're taking an array of strings and mapping each individual, um, let's call it line. And then we also have the index. And uh, we'll just return a template string. So I'm going to say. Um, we need the i value plus one, because that's going to be the line number, with a colon followed by the line itself, like that. Um, 
And that, I think that should do it. Let's see. Yeah. Attempt. <laughs> submit. Submit. Please submit. Okay. We got about a minute left. Can we do one more? Here we go. Uh, form the minimum. Uh, given a list of digits, return the smallest number that could be formed from these digits using the digits only once, ignoring duplicates. So we have an array. All right, I think I, so we only have a minute left, but I think what we need to do is we just need to do, um, we need to get the unique values and then sort them. So I'm gonna put those values into a set because a set will automatically only give us the unique ones. And then uh, with those unique values, we're going to sort it. Um, and when you sort, um, we need a comparison function. And that's just going to sort from, we want to sort from smallest to greatest. So I'll do A minus B, I think. Um, and then uh, we want to join that all together because it's an array. And then we need to parse it into a number. So I'm just going to use the unary plus there. So let's see. There we go, 30 seconds left. <laughs> All right, uh, 20 seconds. Can we do round up to the next multiple of five in 20 seconds? Probably not. Give it an integer as input. Can you round it to the next meaning f five? No, no, I can't, I give up, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, if you like this kind of thing, tune in every Wednesday evening um, on Twitch where I solve sol problems similar to this. We actually solve them in multiple ways. We solve them with for loops, with maps, with filters, reduce, all that good stuff. Uh, and we have a good time doing it. So hopefully join us there. Thank you to all the, all the people that watched that were here doing this. There are currently a little over a hundred people watching while we did that. And I appreciate you. So tune in, see you later.